Uh, greetings and welcome to our edu weekly educational rounds here at Seclair. I'm uh, Jim Eller Meyer and I'm a behavioral health therapist. And perhaps at the beginning of this uh, podcast, you may have noticed that there was silence. So tell me, when uh, when you turn on the TV and there's silence, what what do you think? You might think, you know, the station's down, change the channel. You might think it's broken. Mm -hmm. You might think the television's broken. So if you turn on the radio and there's no sound, what uh, what do you do? Change the station. Change the station, because there's something wrong. There's not supposed to be silence, is there? Silence is beautiful. It is beautiful. However, do, do most people think it's beautiful? No, and that's why I'm sitting here. Absolutely. So what what do we do? We check to see if it's plugged in. That's right. We check to see if there's batteries. My goodness, we can't we can't live without sound. We can't live without sight, sounds, and images, can we? Of course not. So however, and again, Welcome to the Seclair Educational Rounds, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. And our purpose every week to provide some type of concrete living example for you to incorporate into your daily health and wellness in your life. Perhaps to provide a little bit of living life out loud, to participate in a moment to, sh to know uh, the intrinsic beauty beauty of your life. So. We're talking a little bit about, about silence today. And again, today I'm joined by three of my colleagues. So on my far right would be... I'm Ruth Ann Valentine, psychotherapist. That I collaborate with Seclair, a wonderful facility for health and wellness. And I'm Jonathan Peterson. I'm a physician assistant student at Seton Hill University. And my name is Ashley McMahon. I'm a physician assistant student from St. Francis University. Right. And so when we think about silence, uh, we don't think that it has any any power. Uh, so when you, Ruth Ann, you and I were talking earlier, and I said, when you come home, uh, do you feel better when you turn it to, what, what do you do in silence? What do you... you know, that's a very good question. I, I do not own a television, so whenever I do... Uh, home it is silent and silence for me is warm it's comfortable and I have found peace in that environment let me ask uh, many people out there and let me ask you Ashley let me ask you John uh, do some people feel more comfortable when when the television is playing when there's have you ever heard anybody refer to the television as background noise mm -hmm. have you ever heard that John mm -hmm. yeah why would a person need background noise I think we're just used to that stimulation, that sensory stimulation, noises somewhere to fill the to fill that void of silence because we're not comfortable with it. We're not comfortable mm -hmm. with it. And doesn't that say something when you're not comfortable with the silence? Well, you're, wouldn't that be saying you're not comfortable with yourself? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So some of the ways that... Um, so, so some of the ways what we talk about is the power of the silence. Do you ever think that silence had power? Yes. So tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us some examples of when uh, silence can be used as, as power. So silence can be used as power. There are five examples here. We can use it as power during arguments. Um, sometimes that's really hard to do. You want to react immediately to someone arguing at you. But really, you take control of your emotions and gain the power when you actually remain silent. So what does the silence do, John? Silence actually takes the power away from an argument. So, Ruth Ann, if you're invited to an argument party, what are you expected to bring to that party? I'm going to bring my uh, calming presence and, and helping people to be silent. If you were invited to an argument party, what do they expect you to bring? Fight. <laughs> they expect you to bring an argument, do That's they not? Right. That's Absolutely. Right. So you've been invited to a lot of parties, I'm sure, anniversary parties, birthday parties. Uh, you're, you have three children and a lot of birthday parties. Mm -hmm. And what do you, what do, what do people that you're expected to bring to birthday parties? Loud noises, fun. A gift. Mm -hmm. Right. They bring gifts. So to an argument, when you're invited to an argument party, actually, you're expected to bring an argument. Mm -hmm. However, when you show up and you don't, you choose not to participate, you choose to be silent, doesn't that take some of the power away from that argument, John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It does. Say more. Gradually, it gets silent. And if you don't feed the fire, it goes out. So, Ruth Ann, uh, you're a psychotherapist. So tell me, how does a person resist the urge, resist that urge to participate? You know, that's a very good question. Uh, to resist the urge means that you really have to have a, a strong inner core, uh, 
It's your inner resources to be able to process the information and to self-regulate your own emotions and, and to decide to participate or not, and that's wisdom. So we're talking about emotion regulation and we're talking about choices. That's right. Absolutely. And the next one, what would the next one be, Ashley? The next one is gossiping. Okay. So, uh, John, you were mentioning to me something earlier about Ruth Ann's car. What were you saying? Uh, oh, I walked by Ruth Ann's car today and it was really dirty. There's a lot of stuff in there. And when I don't respond to that gossip, what does, what does that mean to you? Oh, maybe that you don't approve of it. Um, you're not interested in, in sharing the gossip. So by, by me responding to that gossip, either positively or negatively, I give it power, do I not? Mm -hmm. Wow, and what power that silence has. The, power, the silence that power has to take away that, away that sting of that gossip. And when I'm silent and I choose not to pass that on, that completely takes the power away from that gossip. So you were mentioning something earlier about a text. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. This is just an experience that the pastor was sharing at church on Sunday. We have a lot of interconnected localities from the West Coast to the East Coast. And he was explaining to the congregation about it. one of the members lamenting about a text that uh, was sent from the West Coast congregation all the way to the East Coast congregation and, and just uh, um, really concerned about gossip and how quick it can spread and what we can do to stop it. And as simply as just not responding to a text is, is powerful enough. Being silent. Mm -hmm. So quite often, Ashley, when people talk about silence, they, 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 all they consider is sound, do they not? Mm -hmm. They consider it sound. Can you, can, can you be silent to images? Can you be silent to images, sights, sounds, and colors? Absolutely. You can choose to be silent and choose not to participate in that. Can you not? Mm -hmm. Can you know what's next? Next we have when someone is talking. So how is silence a powerful tool when someone's talking? It allows you to be able to have the chance to show someone just how important they are to you, giving them your full mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And also it allows you to be in the moment, hear what they're saying, and really take it all in. So. Absolutely. So when we're silent, that means that we're focusing on that purpose. When we're silent, John, does not that uh, mean that we're not thinking about what we're saying? Mm -hmm. That we're participating and we're fully in that conversation? It's a lot like mindfulness, isn't it? It's paying attention on purpose. Yeah. You have three children at home, so I would have a hunch that it's sometimes all three of them talk at the same time. Yeah. How do you handle that, John? Just be silent. Can you? It's difficult. It's, it's a little difficult for a parent sometimes, is it not, Ruthann? Yes, <laughs> it is sometimes. So when we're when we're silent, when everyone else is talking, eventually they're going to catch on that you're not saying anything, that you are being silent. So eventually they're going to stop and wonder what's going on. It sets the tone. Absolutely. You know, the parent can't set the tone. So Ruthann, I know that you're uh, you you had doing much. Uh, the spiritual counseling yes, on people's lives. And uh, it's quite often that when people are filled with sight, sounds, and images, uh, however, when we're, we're never really present and aware for the Creator to put people, places, things, and mm -hmm. circumstances in our life. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, you know, sight, sounds, and images are, are good. When they're overused, then we can move away from the opportunity to come inward into our interior world and hearing the sounds of our own body, our tummy gurgling, telling us that we're hungry, and into the interior world of our soul. So uh, it, it's a balance between the outside world and the inside world. And we're a little timid about our inside world because we're not used to it most often. And because of the uh, attractiveness uh, and and sometimes a distress of the outside world. So a spirit, living spirituality is taking time out to be silent, to be at home with yourself, and to go inward and, and to practice that. And it's called mindfulness. It's called prayer. Absolutely. It's a connection. It is a connection. So, so for those of you that are out there watching today, I'm sure that all of you are very familiar that I 
your host and deeply in love with the sound of his own voice. However, I'm attempting to be mindful and listening to everything that everyone has said. And uh, Ruth Ann has something uh, particularly beautiful for us to share. Yes, this is a, uh, a, um, a song, but I'm going to read the lyrics. And it's called Teach Me to Stop and Listen. And it's written by Ken Medema. Teach me to stop and listen. Teach me to center down. Teach me the use of silence. Teach me where peace is found. Teach me to hear your calling. Teach me to search your word. Teach me to hear in silence things I have never heard. Teach me to be collective. Teach me to be in tune. Teach me to be directed. Silence will end so soon. Then when it's time for moving, grant it that I may bring to every day and every moment peace from a silent spring. Ruth Ann had one, uh, one line particularly struck out to me, and that's, teach me to hear in silence things I have never heard. No, that's the beauty of silence. It takes us into the mystery of who we are. And every time I sit in silence, I find something new, ever so small most of the time. And that draws me uh, back to want to uh, experience that silence. Ashley, at times what we do, uh, what we ask people to do is using their, using their sight, is I ask them to be in a familiar environment, be along, be along a, uh, be along a place where they have never noticed before. Yeah, that kind of threw me off. Give that's a, a, just give it a moment, yeah. I'll just put a cut there. Okay. Hopefully they don't fall back. Okay. So, Ashley, quite often when we think of think, hear in silence things I have never heard, quite often what will ask people to be mindful and be descriptive of what's going on around them and paying attention on purpose is I'll ask them to be in a familiar environment, either on a way home that they've gone many times before, or in a room, let's say their bedroom, a living room, in a friend's home, uh, classroom, some places they've never been, they've been many, many times before I'll ask them to notice something that they haven't noticed before. So that's my challenge to everyone at this table, is to notice something in a familiar environment that you've never noticed before. It'll help you become present and aware, just as that lovely line that Ruth Ann said, teach me to hear in silence things I have never heard. So if we're actually silent, Ruth Ann, what mm -hmm. you're saying is if we shut out the sights, sounds, mm -hmm. and images, then we will hear things we've never heard. That's right. And it's very, very fulfilling and exciting and gives us a long life. Indeed, indeed. And it just helps staying in the moment and about what mindfulness. So again, we're so glad that everyone joined us today. Uh, we'll ask that you spend a few moments in silent re reflection today, perhaps listening for things you've never heard before. And my hunch is that you will. So and always a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask everyone out there to perhaps consider fishing without bait. Until then, your assignment, as always, is to be a kindness to another and do a kindness for yourself. Namaste.